and welcome back to the channel. On September 16th, noted YouTuber, smart guy, and totally not a super villain Kyle Hill posed this question to his Twitter followers. 8 divided by 2 times parentheses 2 plus 2. And he gave two options for the answer. He said it could be 1, and he said it could be 16. So before I give you the results of that poll, I would really appreciate it if you would take a second, pause the video, and just see if you can figure out which one of these it is on your own, and more importantly, see if you can explain in words how you got to that conclusion. I'll wait for a sec. As you can see, a pretty healthy majority um, said that the answer is one, and uh, just over 40% said that the answer was 16. And this is out of over 18,000 um, respondents. Now, this is not a randomized scientific survey, but it does give us a lot to work with. And the results of this poll fascinate me because the objectively correct answer is 16. Now, a lot of folks just stopped there. And in fact, I'm sure a lot of folks just turned off the video and went to leave a nasty comment in the comments. But again, I don't want to dismiss the folks that said one or tell them that they are totally 100% wrong. That is a problem in math education that we have. If you get the wrong answer, you are considered to be a dunce or dumb or whatever. That is not the case. And I love the fact that 60% of people said that the answer is one, because I think this reveals something very important about how we communicate both in math and out there in the real world. Now, most of you learned about order of operations in elementary school, um, and what you probably learned was something like either PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, um, or uh, something like, please excuse, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or something along those lines, at least in the United States. Um, I don't know what the mnemonic devices are um, elsewhere. I think that PEMDAS is wrong and needs to be gotten rid of. Now, PEMDAS is super easy to remember. That and like SOHCAHTOA are things that even 40 or 50 years later, most people will remember from their math classes, even if they never actually had occasion to use those topics again. But the problem with PEMDAS is it is a bit misleading, and actually I think that it might be time to retire this particular device. Let me show you what I mean. So most folks are aware that PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, right? So when we are told as kids, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And already we run into our first stumbling block because this mnemonic device makes an assertion, not an assertion, but it makes an implication that ends up to not be the case. What it looks like you're supposed to do here is do the stuff in parentheses first, then the exponents, then all of the multiplication, then the division, then the addition, and then the subtraction. And this is, I want to make it very clear, an absolutely reasonable way to look at PEMDAS. If you are not told explicitly by your teacher, well, wait a second, this doesn't mean what we say it means, and it actually means this other thing that's a little bit slightly more confusing, then this is an absolutely reasonable way to see it. And if, if we use this method of PEMDAS, let's see what we get. So I'm going to scooch this over a bit, and we will say that this is equal to, um, we would do the parentheses first, right? So 2 plus 2 is 4, so we get 8 divided by 2 times 4. And then because next third is multiplication, we do the multiplication, 2 times 4, so we get 8 divided by 8, and of course 8 divided by 8 is 1, and that is the answer that we would get if we take PEMDAS literally as written. Now, as many of you are probably already jumping to the comments to tell me what the actual rule is, Mr. Cunningham, 
you take the multiplication and the division and you do that together. And you take the addition and subtraction and you do that together. This hypothetical uh, YouTube or Facebook person says. And yeah, I can see that. So instead of having multiplication and division be three and four, it would be just step three and it would all happen at the same time. And then addition and subtraction would be just step four. But here's the problem. Why though? I don't like arbitrary rules. If you can't explain to me why a thing is the way it is, I'm not interested. Well, this is one thing I can clear up. The reason why multiplication and division happen on the same step is because multiplication and division are actually, literally, the same process. They aren't opposites, they are actually the same thing, and here's what I mean. All right, I'm gonna section off some space here. Let's say I just have eight divided by two, okay? Forget all the rest of it, just look at eight divided by two. We can represent this as eight times one half. Try it on a calculator if you don't believe me. Eight divided by two and eight times one half or 0 0.5 are the same thing. These are the same exact process. So division is one of those things that we don't teach very well at elementary school, or at least we didn't when I was in elementary school, because I was taught that they were two completely distinct processes. And if you're taught that multiplication and division are two fundamentally different things, which they aren't, then I can totally see taking PEMDAS totally literally and getting the answer of one. But if instead we interpret that divided by two, if we interpret it as eight times one half parentheses two plus two, and yes, this is totally equivalent, well then the order becomes much more clear. This becomes eight times one half, inside the parentheses is still four, right? And now we can tell that we've got three things that are multiplied together. Multiplication is associative and commutative, definitions above, so we can do them in whatever order we want. Eight times one half is four, times four is 16, or we could do it the other way, four times one half is two, times eight is 16. Either way, the answer is 16. But even then, even if you know that multiplication and division happen on the same step, which many people do and still end up getting the answer one, there is another place that you can get tripped up in all of these symbols, and it has to do with this symbol right here. Now we know that that symbol means divided by, but that doesn't make it completely unambiguous, and you're gonna see what I mean in just a moment. Take a look at how these numbers are grouped. Okay, let's, let's forget about PEMDAS and order of operations for just a second. Just look at how these are grouped together. It looks very much like what we have are two groups of numbers, an eight, and then this stuff over here, right? The two times two plus two. It looks very much like we have two groups. I mean, look at how physically close together all of those twos are compared to that eight, which is way out there on the other side of the divided by sign. It would be very, very easy to interpret this as eight over, two times two plus two. Now, I want to reiterate that the answer is objectively 16. That is not what the divided by symbol means, but it is on us as math educators to communicate what the symbols mean. And if this one is being misinterpreted to the point where a majority of people are getting an inaccurate answer for reasonable reasons, then maybe we need to revisit this symbol, and maybe we need to be better about educating people about what the symbol means exactly. Let me give you an analogy. I can't stand it, even though I know I'm in the wrong, when people use the word literally just for emphasis. Stick with me, I promise I'm gonna connect the dots in a moment. What literally used to mean was in fact exactly as described. It is literally 90 degrees out there would mean it is actually 90 degrees out there. But over time, that has developed and changed, and now a lot of people use literally, mostly in pop culture, but in everyday life as well now, they use literally just as added flavor. Oh my God, I was literally dying of hunger last night. That sort of thing. 
The point is, the word literally is bereft of context, ambiguous. You can't tell whether someone means it or not unless you look at the context. If someone says, oh my god, I am literally dying right now, most people will interpret that through the context to mean, not literally, literally, I'm just using it for impact. But in math, you can't have that. In language, you can, and it's okay, and that definition of literally is in the dictionary now. But in math, if you have a word or a symbol like this one, and there are several others that I will complain about in later videos, if you have symbols that can be interpreted in multiple different ways, it is up to us, the mathematical and educational community, to find a way to make that less ambiguous, rather than just making people feel bad in YouTube comments and Twitter threads because they got the wrong answer. So to sort of sum up everything that we've talked about today, I'd like to draw your attention to the four points above my head. First off, division is just multiplication of the reciprocal. They're the same thing. Secondly, and similarly, subtraction is addition of the opposite. I'm pretty sure most of you know intuitively and mathematically that something like 5 minus 3 is equivalent to 5 plus negative 3. Those are the same value, they're the same thing. So again, addition and subtraction, they don't necessarily just happen on the same step, they are the same step. My calculus teacher in high school always told me that parentheses are free, so if you do want this equation to come out to 1, you can always throw in some extra parentheses to ensure that the order of operations goes the way you want it to. And finally, I would like to introduce my brand new mnemonic device, PIMA. Yes, PIMA. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, addition. I don't think it's going to catch on, but I think it would if we were to start teaching early that multiplication and division are the same thing, and that addition and subtraction are the same thing. Then you don't have to explain, okay, so the multiplication and the division happen on the same step for some reason. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe, and thank you so much to Kyle for putting up this fascinating post with such fascinating results. Thanks for watching. See you next time.